Hello my friends and welcome back to another episode of Flutter Explained. Today we want to talk a little bit about Flutter and game development and for that I was making a small experiment. I waited for, I invested 14 days just making game development and tried to bring a game on the market. So to just see if I can be able to create a game. And in that time, I was asked by um, Veri if I wanted to join her in a game jam, the Flame Game Jam 2020. And well, it was inside of the 14 days. So we were able to create a game in that time. And so I was able to win a dash and also a t-shirt from Flutter, which I really love. So what do I want to share with you today? I want to share the experience that I had, what I would recommend you if you want to start with some game development. And last but not least, I want to just give you the experience, what I learned on the way and how to create something cool with the Flame Game Engine. Now, without further ado, let's get started. Today's video is not sponsored, but if you want to check out down in the video description, I created a link. And in the couple of next months, yes, months, I know it will take some time. Uh, I want to create a Dart Foundations course and I want to invite you. As soon as I have one chapter complete, I will propose it to you so you can directly jumpstart on it. And I'm very proud to go that step and I really want to know what you think about it. So please let me know down in the comments below. The Flame Game Engine is a Flutter game engine and the cool thing is they use the power of the Flutter infrastructure to provide their Flame Engine yeah, system on top of it. What does that give to you as a user of that whole library? Well, you have input already prepared, game loop is already there, very simple but very powerful. Images are handled, you have possibilities to load assets, all the default stuff that you need more or less to create a game. And they also created the Flame Component System, FCS, which allows you to create multiple components that rely on each other. And with that, you get something very cool connected and you can nearly use Flame then like widgets, you know, components, widgets, they could work nearly the same way. It's a pretty neat system. I really liked it and enjoyed to work with it. And the cool thing is with that, they take the heavy lifting. On top of this, there are several packages that creates a whole ecosystem. Um, you maybe saw the package Bonfire, which uses Flame to let you easily create role-playing games. So to get you, give you an understanding of what you can achieve with the Flame Game Engine, um, Flutter created a project called Pinball and I think in collaboration with the very good company, you know, with the very good CLI and all the cool features and open store stuff, they created a game called Pinball, which is also a very fantastic repository if you want to get ideas on how you can create your own Flutter Flame game. Down in the video description you will find of course the GitHub repository link and of course also the link to the game. There you can see really how much uh, possibilities you have to create a game and also some very sneaky packages that you could maybe use for your own game like Flame Behaviors. I found that later and also in the game jam thanks to Alejandro at this point because he was a, such a fantastic teammate and yeah also a teacher because he was really strong suited for the flame game engine. The second game I want to um, show you is Spike and Bees. Uh, it's a fantastic game was created and is the winner of the flame game and midway mid-year 2022. It's very simplistic with the graphic design. That's because we had the uh, topic one bit. It makes it really cool and makes it very easy to see how you can create simple games, but very fun games. And I really like to encourage you to check it out. It's on itch I uploaded. You find the links, of course, down in the video description below. So where did I struggle into the development? Well, I didn't have any particular experience in the game development, especially area, and I didn't know about Flame in that case. So I had at the first beginning a problem to understand the components, how they work and interact together. Learn and understand this component system that Flame gives you here, because it's very powerful and it allows you to understand how the things are connected. If this is once in your mind and you completely understand it, yeah, then you are ready to use Flame perfectly fine. As a third tip, if you go into the game development with Flame, is to check out libraries like the Flame Behaviors from Very Good Ventures. A second thing that I had uh, problems with at the beginning is I didn't use uh, state management at all. So that means I didn't have a library for that. So I invested <laughs> and used classes that called each other just to make it very ugly, public variables everywhere, everything could walk with everything. 
But I learned um, to use packages is a very good thing in Flame. So third tip of me is using Flutter block, for example, to keep your state. Flutter, uh, Flutter block in, or Flame block in this specific area is very useful because you can use it inside of your widgets of Flutter, but also inside of the Flame components and they can interact with each other, which updates the state on both sides. Really cool, really helped me a lot. Another thing is the Flame behaviors. They help you to separate update code, for example, from the components and the entities. And that makes it very nice and beautiful to read software development code. So if you are a professional programmer, take an eye on it. As a conclusion to my self-built game, it makes tons of fun to create them. It's a fantastic experience to learn Flutter. It's a fantastic experience to learn Dart. And the best thing is you can play a game on the way. Um, additionally, you see your results immediately. All of that makes you very happy. It satisfies as crazy. And I highly recommend to do it yourself if you have never participated in something like that. It's really a lot of fun to do it. And I encourage you a lot to join the next Flame Game Jam that probably will be end of this year. And the Flame Game Jam is a very good uh, keyword because, as I said at the beginning, Vary was inviting me into her team, more or less, of four people into the Flame Game Jam 22. And I was so nervous to get started there, but it was an amazing experience. First of all, Very was able to ask someone, uh, Alejandro, he was, I think he's working at uh, Very Good Ventures, and he helped us tons. He was so freaking smart. Join a team. It sounds weird, but they help you. They have ideas. Search someone where you can ask questions, who can mentor you. Especially in game development where so many things can go wrong and where you have to think about performance, where you cannot just put everything in variables, make it very big. That helps you a lot. Second thing, how does such a flame game engine work at the end, right? So how, how do you do a game jam? From my side, what we did is we searched a topic uh, we had an idea list and started with three small ideas and um, scribbled in Figma in that case. I know Figma is now bought by Adobe. I don't know how long you have that, but yeah, use something to scribble some ideas down, make it visual, try to get add pictures to it and get more information. Ask the teammates who can do something or what he's very good at. And after that, try to share your experience and the tasks to each other. So whoever is best at a certain topic should take that topic. Um, we only had 48 hours at the end. So I, I was developing, um, we created sprite sheets, we created everything, it was so much fun. And I highly recommend you to also try that at least once in your life. It's really, really cool. This was a little bit of a talking session again, and I'm thankful that you joined. If you want to know more about Flame, if you want to go deep dive in coding, you have two possibilities. Number one, you can join me on Twitch and watch how I struggle in live streaming when I create something with Flame and I work maybe further with my auto clicker. A second option is you like and hit the subscribe button. And if you like that video and I see you are interested in this particular topic, I will go more into detail how the component system works, how the things are connected, how you could create your own very own first game. And if you are already experienced with Flame, you are maybe interested on how you can connect your Flame game engine with WebSockets. There are some possibilities, but in this video here, I will explain you in detail how you can create a terminal application with sockets. It's really interesting. So if you are interested, stay tuned and click that video.